Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the paper A CH Functionalization Strategy Enables an Enantioselective Formal Synthesis of Aflatoxin B2. This work was published in Orglet by the Sorensen and Davies groups. Aflatoxin B2 is part of a larger family of aflatoxins that were first identified in 1962 after an outbreak of Turkey X disease, which had an unknown cause at the time. The investigations into the outbreak of this disease identified that these toxins were produced by the Aspergillus flavus bacteria and have been known to cause the contamination of various food supplies, including peanuts and wheat. These toxins are incredibly carcinogenic and can also cause liver damage and stunted growth in children. Chemically, these compounds are quite interesting for several different structural reasons. The first of which is the pentasubstituted aryl ring, which forms the core of the molecule. There are also two stereocenters formed at the junction of two fused rings. These rings form part of the larger fused framework, consisting of five different rings. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The first disconnection occurs between the A ring and the D and E rings, which could be installed using a Peckman condensation. This leads back to a tricyclic intermediate, which can be disconnected at the C and B rings through an acetylization reaction. This precursor could be obtained from the reduction of a polyacetylated molecule incorporating a Weinreb amide. These acetate groups, appended to the aromatic ring, will be introduced using CH functionalization, and the alkyl acetate will be generated from the oxidative cleavage of an alkene. Further CH functionalization and amidation disconnections lead back to the starting material of the synthesis, which is a diazo functionalized ester. So let's start the synthesis with this ester. This compound was reacted with 2 hexene using a rhodium catalyst, which promoted a CH insertion reaction to install the side chain in the position of the diazo group. This formed the product in a 71% yield as a single isomer. The catalyst acts by bonding to the substrate upon the elimination of nitrogen gas, and the carbene that is formed can react with the allylic CH bond, forming a transition state where the carbene interacts with both the terminal carbon and its hydrogen. This then forms a new carbon carbon bond upon the elimination of the chiral rhodium catalyst. The next reaction involved the installation of a Weinreb amide. Dimethyl hydroxylamine was reacted with isopropyl magnesium chloride. This acted as a base and formed the negatively charged nitrogen nucleophile, which added to the ester. This forms a tetrahedral intermediate, which eliminated the trifluoroethanol group, forming the Weinreb amide in a 70% yield. Taking this compound forward, they then carried out a Lemieux Johnson oxidation. Osmium tetroxide first undergoes a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition with the double bond, and this forms a cyclic intermediate. This is then hydrolyzed to generate a 1,2 diol. The diol then reacts with sodium periodate to form a cyclic hexavalent iodine species. This undergoes a cycloreversion to break the carbon-carbon bond and form an aldehyde in an 88% yield. This aldehyde was then reduced with sodium borohydride and the alcohol was acetylated using a mixture of acetic anhydride and DMAP. The DMAP acts as a nucleophilic catalyst which first reacts with the acetic anhydride to form a cationic intermediate, which is a better acylating agent than the anhydride itself. The DMAP is regenerated upon the acylation of the alcohol and can go on to react further. Overall, the target acetate was produced in an 85% yield over two steps. The next step of the synthesis involved another CH activation reaction. In this case, a palladium promoted acetoxylation reaction in this reaction, the Weinreb amide acts as a directing group which coordinates to the palladium together with a pyridine based ligand and an acetate group. This acetate group assists in the CH activation by interacting with the proton, allowing for it to be abstracted. The acetate group can then bond to the carbon to take its place. This carbon oxygen bond formation is further promoted by diacetoxy iodobenzene. Overall, two acetate groups were installed in the molecule in both positions, ortho to the group containing the Weinreb amide. Having served its purpose, 
the amide could now be removed, and this was carried out by reduction with dibal H. This reagent adds a hydride to the carbonyl centre and promotes the reduction of the amide to an aldehyde. This reaction also occurred at the acetate esters, forming a transient triol aldehyde which was not isolated and instead was reacted with hydrochloric acid and this promoted the cyclization to form the tricyclic fragment containing the A, B and C rings. This occurs by first protonating the aldehyde, making it more electrophilic, allowing for the intramolecular attack of a hydroxyl group bound to the aromatic ring. The resulting hemiacetal is further protonated and eliminates water, and the electrophilic intermediate is once again attacked by an alcohol group, in this case, the primary alkyl alcohol. This cyclization formed the tricyclic fragment in an 84% yield. The completion of this tricyclic intermediate brings to the end the formal synthesis of aflatoxin B2, as this synthesis can be completed using previously reported methods. One such method is the Peckman condensation reported by Wang and Zhu. Their synthesis uses intermediate and reacted it with an enone ester together with a scandium triflate catalyst. This first undergoes a transesterification reaction and the enone then takes part in an intramolecular electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction to form the D and E rings. This is reported to undergo a spontaneous oxidation during this reaction to form aflatoxin B2 in a 77% yield. Well that brings us to the end of this total synthesis. In the next video I will be looking at the medicinal chemistry of a bio-inspired iron complex that specifically targets colorectal cancer.